at Nacogdoches. You can also listen to us online anywhere around the world at redriverradio.org, where you can hear all three of our channels, our main channel, our all-classical HD2 channel, and our all-news and information HD3 channel, where you can hear programs like 1A, Fresh Air, Here and Now, and On Point. Our programming made possible today by the Community Foundation of North Louisiana, encouraging thoughtful giving. It's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Just kidding, it's me. Hello, I am your host, Emily Barmore, here with The Picture Show. And today, we're going to be talking about, today it's going to be a Halloween theme because of tomorrow being Friday the 13th. Because of that, we'll be talking about the movie Friday the 13th, Jeepers Creepers, and Nightmare on Elm Street. We have a mass up trailer for you guys, so let's take a look at that. falls across the land the midnight hour is close at hand creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting down must stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell the demons squeal in sheer delight. It's you they spy, so plump, so bright. But though the groove is hard to beat, yet still you stand with frozen feet. You try to run, you try to scream, but no more sun you'll ever see. For evil reaches from the crypt to crush you with its icy grip. And that was the mashup trailer for the Halloween theme done by our editor, Zach Story. And today, to talk to me with it is my good friend, James French. How are you doing today? Hello. I'm doing good. Alrighty, so we're going to be talking about, Friday, the first movie we're going to be talking about is Friday the 13th, which is about seven camp counselors go mm -hmm. to Camp Crystal Lake. When they go to Camp Crystal Lake, Crystal Lake, they find out that it's haunted by a boy who drowned by the name of Jason, and they're just murdered left and right. Which, mm -hmm. have you have you seen the very first Friday the 13th? Mm-hmm. What was your opinion on Friday the 13th, the very first one? The very first one, with the mother, right? The, yes. Yeah. At first, like, I wouldn't, if I never would have known that it was the mother, I've been probably since watching it for the first time, would think, like, where's Jason? But especially since they didn't show the killer, like, first off, it gets you, like, wondering. Yes. Um, the whole, through the whole movie, so it kind of kept me engaged. Which I never, which in this one was the first Friday the 13th, but it never officially shown Jason until the very end of the movie when he's the little boy. But with this one, every Friday the 13th, when you say Jason, you think of big jacket, hockey mask, mm -hmm. or the potato sack, it's another famous one. Yep. All of these the stereotypical one but in this one is actually the mother being the killer getting revenge for his for her son mm -hmm. which i thought that was an interesting I thought it thing was they too. did like, it kind of kicked out the series and made made it more sense right right and i really did like how they did with that another movie we have is nightmare on elm street the very first one in 1984 if i remember correctly mm -hmm. now do you want to so. tell us about what that was about uh that one was about um about this uh, person or a demon, nobody never been sure what it was, uh, named Freddy Krueger, who haunted the children of the ones who, the, par uh, the children of the parents who killed them. Right. I believe I said that right. <laughs> I think 
think that's kinda. right. It was like three kids. It was actually Johnny Depp's first ever acting role mm -hmm. was in this movie. And I thought that was very interesting that they, that this was actually the start of his, because everybody knows who Johnny Depp is now. If you've ever seen any like creepy Tim Burton movie, you know, oh yeah, there's Johnny Depp right there. Exactly. But I like that one where, you know, they have Freddy Cougar as like the, kind of like a demon. Yeah. Like, kind of like it, everybody's worst nightmare. Worst, but yeah, it's hard for me to like to describe a certain word of what he is. Because no one really knows what yeah. officially he is. And I thought it was really funny because they go into, he basically haunts their nightmares. Mm -hmm. That's how you see Freddy Cougar is you see his nightmares. And anytime they fall asleep, there's yep. a scene where they were at the school where Nancy fell asleep at the school. Yeah. I think Nancy is correct. Where they fell asleep, where she fell asleep at the school, and it's actually really interesting yeah, how they did that. That's what made it more like kind of terrifying in a way if it were mm -hmm. real in real life, since you, it's hard to run away from dreams or sleeping because we need sleep to function. Right. And trying not to sleep it makes it even more dangerous on yourself in real life, like trying right. to get the everyday life, trying to drive and falling asleep, and that'll be more dangerous. Killing yourself in real life as well in a dream, so. That made them more fearsome. Right, and another, the last movie we're gonna be talking about today is Jeepers Creepers, which is about a, this one's kind of hard to describe. He's kind of a demon, kind of not. He feeds on other people to kind of get his abilities. Like there's a song that they sing called, mm -hmm. Jeep, goes Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those peepers, where it really means when you need your eyes, you get your eye colors and everything, mm -hmm. and he, mainly based on a brother and sister where they're driving down trying to visit their parents and they see him, they see Jeepers Creepers and they're trying to kind of stop him a little bit, mm -hmm. if I can say that correctly. But I thought it was very interesting how they did with this and the end of the movie is very, so, very disturbing. Yeah, it may, I watched it like it, I finished like at 2 a.m. and I was kind of upset <laughs> with the ending, so yeah. I did the same thing a very long time ago when I watched it with my cousin. Uh, we did the same thing, but it's a very interesting movie, Indeed. if I can, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, out of all these movies, which one do you think would be your favorite and your top favorite? Um, I wanna say Jeepers Creepers, because first of all, I like the way they did only focus on two characters instead of like seven, which is not a bad idea. Right, it's but not bad. But the, they were able to engage the characters and show, they had like a lot more personality being brother and sister starting off they're like really like they're I like the way like they're like arguing bickering a lot like brother and sister made it kind of like funny and engaging so you don't want them to go away or die since you know something bad's gonna happen to them and right. so you like I like both of them so you want them to be able to stop this thing even though it's really unlikely you know right I think my favorite out of the three is would have to be Nightmare on Elm Street because I do like the aspect of like you said earlier, you can't really escape from your dream and he haunts your dream, not only your nightmares, but in your dreams and he kind of haunts you in real life and I think that's a really good aspect. That we're was gonna my go second favorite. We're gonna go ahead and go to a little break. We're gonna go to Esther Duty for the Hollywood Fresh and then we'll come back and discuss more about the movie. Stay tuned with us. If you're like most Americans, you may be surprised to learn where some of the best known Calypso songs originated and how you can enjoy them at home today. Though such songs as Deo, 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 till I come and me one go. Jamaica Farewell, Down the way where the nights are gay and the sun shines daily on the mountain top. I took a trip on a sailing ship and when I reached Jamaica, I made a stop. Island in the Sun, Oh, Island in the Sun. By my father's hand, all my days I will sing in praise of your forest waters, your shining sand. And many more may sound like they sprang from roving troubadours. They were all written by the same man. Irving Burgey was born in 1924 and attended Juilliard School of Music on the GI Bill. Then in the 1950s, he met singer Harry Belafonte. Their association led to the album Calypso, the first to sell a million copies. Virgie's songs have been heard on Broadway. TV. In movies. And in many places where people love to sing.
Deo even went into space, used as a wake-up call on the shuttle Atlantis. He also wrote Barbados's national anthem, as well as the Christmas evergreen Mary's Boy Child. Now his life and music can be seen and heard on an exciting, tuneful DVD available at irvingburgie.com. At that site, you can also get CDs of his music and a 25-tune songbook, as well as his riveting autobiography, Deo. Hello, I'm Esther Duty, and here is your Hollywood Fresh. According to CNN, Harvey Weinstein, Hollywood producer of Shakespeare in Love and The King's Speech, has been fired from the Weinstein Company due to numerous incidents of alleged sexual harassment. Since then, several celebrities have spoken out against Weinstein, including Meryl Streep, who four days after the allegation stated, the behavior is inexcusable, but the abuse of power familiar. Each brave voice that is raised, heard, and credited by our watchdog media will ultimately change the game. Amongst the allegations, Weinstein managed to submit a statement to Times Magazine, which quoted, I apologize for the way I've behaved with colleagues. I know it has caused a lot of pain. This continues to be a developing story. Last Friday, Rachel Bilson's Los Angeles home was robbed of around $50,000 in goods, including jewelry, shoes, and handbags. The burglary reportedly took place last Friday while the actress was out for only a few hours. One of the things taken was her mother's engagement ring. When interviewed by TMZ, Bilson commented, it's important to detach from material things, but the special personal things I lost are hard to forget. By Gossip Cop's count, this is actually the sixth time Bilson has been robbed. Is Taylor Swift's music failing on the charts? USA Today thinks so. The information media company posted an article last Monday explaining why her two singles, Look What You Made Me Do and Ready For It, aren't as successful as her music in the past. For example, Shake It Off from her 2014 album, 1989, shot its way up at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and stayed there for 12 weeks. The song that took its place was another one of Taylor's hit singles, Blank Space. This accomplishment made her the first female artist to replace herself on top of the charts. Her newest album, Reputation, isn't off to as good of a start. Look What You Made Me Do only spent three weeks at number one on Hollywood Billboard before swiftly dropping to number five, ready for it, landed on number four for a short while before falling to number 39 last week. We'll see how the rest of her music holds up when Reputation releases November 10th. That's all the news in Hollywood today. I'm Esther Duty, and let's get back to the picture show. And welcome back to the picture show. Again, we are talking about Halloween movies, We're talking about the top three that are my favorite are Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street and Jeepers Creepers. Again, talking to me with it today is James French. Yep, hello. Alrighty, so we already talked about what our favorite movies out of the three. Let's talk about our favorite scenes from um, any of the movies. Out of all the oh, three man. movies, what would be your absolute favorite scene? Um, let's see. By favorite, if you mean like creative, by like the, <laughs> the kills, I guess. <laughs> One of them that got me was in Friday, Friday the 13th when like he was laying in bed and like the knife just came up and like oh, unexpectedly that. stuck him underneath like the throw that kind of got me i didn't see that one coming i didn't see that one coming i was expecting him i was expecting him to just look at it because you know he's smoking i was expecting mm -hmm. him to just like f like whoever's murdering him like mm -hmm. the mom to just come up and just grab him and just pull him under the bed yeah, and stuff but no it's just like we're just gonna go to the bed and just skim. yeah i mean one of how long was she laying under there like <laughs> she had the whole I time know. <laughs> She had to be under there forever because if you see one of the, in that same scene, almost mm -hmm. the same scene, mm -hmm. they're doing a little, they're doing a little thing and then yeah. they scroll. <laughs> the bunk bed. Oh up, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man. And you see one yeah. of them that's already been yeah, murdered. That was there. really morbid. <laughs> that was very morbid. Um, one of my favorite scenes out of all three of these movies. You're right, that is hard. It is, it is pretty I hard. I think it would have to be the very ending scene of Deeper's Creepers because yeah. you don't, because you see him taking off with Darius and then you don't really see, also spoiler alerts. <laughs> yeah, I saw the movie by now. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen it in 2001, this mm -hmm. spoiler alert. Um, but we're... You go to, you pan him down, you're in his lair, and you see, he's just sitting there, just, you see his back, he's just sitting there doing whatever he's doing at the desk, and you turn, mm -hmm. and you see 
just pan up a body and then you see Darius with no eyes yep, and then the very end he's singing, he's singing the song and he goes yep. where did you get those eyes and then you see out of his eye hole mm -hmm. uh Deepers Creepers with Darius eyes and I think that is a yeah. really cool scene yeah that was, that was pretty cool that messed me up though <laughs> oh that a messed lot. me up so hard <laughs> but out of the three movies which would be your least favorite least favorite uh let's see Probably Friday the Thirteenth, because just like the first one, since it was, or since usually I'm used to Jason like going around and seeing hockey masks, but since you don't really see, see the killer, you or you just see like the camera, it was pretty cool to deal with the camera like showing from the killer's eyes thing from the yes. whole movie, and you're wondering what it looks like, but it wasn't as effective as compared to Nightmare on Elm Street and the story-wise that is. All right, I so. would have to agree with you on that with Friday the Thirteenth being. Mm -hmm. It wasn't least, bad though. It wasn't. It was not bad. I just love '80s and like '70s, '80s and '90s horror because you can't really, sh well, not really like not show a lot, but mm -hmm. they don't. They didn't have the effects that we do today. Yeah, today, yep. To where we, you go see an example, Logan, mm -hmm. and someone dies and he kills someone, and you see everything. You see it all. While mm -hmm. in this one, they don't have the effects to where. And one of them where he's about to cut, use the axe for one of the girls. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was in the shower when she's about to go take a shower. Mm -hmm. Or trying to find someone in the showers. You just see the axe zoom into her screaming. Yeah. And then you just, and he comes down with the axe and just then it just, <laughs> boom. Like, mm -hmm. they didn't have the editing skills that we did, but they could have, again, done so much more. But I think it was cool that they didn't really show the killer and you. Yeah, it's and it was the mother and not Jason. Mm -hmm. But you don't see Jason till the very end where she's rowing on, where the girl is just on the kayak, and the kayak, is it a kayak or a canoe? I, th I think it's a kayak, I want to say kayak. I want to say it's a kayak, sure. maybe it's a canoe. <laughs> Either or, she's sitting there, she sees the cops, and then all you see is a little boy come out of the water and just pull her under, and that's supposed yeah. to be Jason. And I think that's really cool how they did mm -hmm. that, how they finally brought Jason into the picture. But even, even like the actor for the mother, like I like the way she looked at normal. I was expecting like a weird, like creepy old lady. But the fact oh. she looked at, like nice, warm and welcome, like at really At the beginning got when me. you first meet her, she's like, oh my gosh, how can this happen? And then mm -hmm. you find out she's the mother and then you kind of see her going crazy because she's like, mommy, yep. kill the mommy. Yep. I am doing it. Jason. That was, that was really cool, you. actually. That <laughs> kind of messed me up a little bit. I'm like, that is weird. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna back up a little bit. <laughs> but um, out of the movies, how would you rate them in order of favorite? Uh, for me, is Jeepers, Creep Jeepers Creepers, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the Thirteenth. Mine would be Nightmare on Elm Street, then well, Jeepers Creepers, then Nightmare on Elm Street, then Friday the Thirteenth, because I think, like I said, Friday the Thirteenth uh, or now I'm on Elm Street, the aspect of the movie was really cool. Jeepers Creepers. Mm -hmm. just, it gives you the creepy vibe. I like that they focus yeah. on two people. Yeah. But I feel like they could have gone, in my opinion, I don't want to say they didn't do a lot because it was still a really good movie. Mm -hmm. It's just they kind of focus more on the kids more than Jeepers Creepers. So, like, maybe, like, the, like, 40, 30, 30, 40 minutes to the That's end mean, of the yeah. movie. I kind of like the pacing of it too, though. It had like, to me, it had pretty good pacing. It's kind of right. fast paced. Right, and it gave you the very, very <laughs> creepy aspect. And of course, Friday the 13th, um, like we said earlier, it's just, it doesn't have the same effect as the other. It's more, mm -hmm. it wasn't really a horror movie that they were going for. It's more like a suspense movie. Mm -hmm. And because I don't really deal with blood very well, <laughs> very, very bloody, like the bed scene from Nightmare on Elm Street. How did I forget that scene? I that don't know. scene <laughs> gave me nightmares for months. Because <laughs> you just see, you see uh, Glenn just laying in the bed, just, just relaxing. Just fall, he's just asleep with his TV on his side and his headphones on. And then all of a sudden, hands come out of the bed and oh, yep. pull him in. I, the reason and I saw that one coming is because in the game, uh, Mortal Kombat, that's a, one of Freddy Krueger's finishers, but the exact same thing. So like actually, really? actually seeing it in the movie, I was like, that's where that came from. It was kind of cool. <laughs> you learn where a video game move came from, mm -hmm. or you learn where a movie scene came from, from a video game. All right, we're going to go ahead and take another break. We're going to go to... 
Daniel Foots with DVDs and Netflix, and then we'll come back, kind of wrap up a little bit of the show, so stay tuned with us. It's no flight of fancy to say traveling by plane today could be better. Fortunately, you can be part of the improvement. One of the main plane problems is sharing space. Try to be generous. For example, before you lean your seat back, tell the person behind you your intention. If he or she objects because of height, work, child care, or any reason, try to work out a timeshare for the air between you. When you do recline, do it slowly. Return the seat back to its upright position during meal and drink servings. As for rubbing elbows with strangers on the shared armrest, again, arrange some sort of joint custody. Try to avoid touching seat backs as you walk in the aisle. If the plane lurches, balance yourself by grabbing the luggage compartment instead. Speaking of the luggage compartment, don't be a bin pig. Put your bag in with the narrow side out. Keep this advice in mind and you may find your next plane trip to be much more pleasant for yourself and your fellow passengers. If any of the nearly 80 million American kids who carry school backpacks is someone you care about, there are a few things you may want to consider so as not to let the backpack become a big pain in, well, the back. First, make sure that even fully loaded, the backpack doesn't weigh more than 10% of the child's total body weight. The height of the backpack should extend from approximately two inches below the shoulder blades to waist level or slightly above the waist. Select a pack with well-padded shoulder straps. The neck and shoulders have many blood vessels and nerves that can cause pain and tingling in the neck, arms, and hands when there's too much pressure. Adjust those straps so that the pack fits snugly on your child's back. A pack that's too loose can pull the child backward and strain muscles. Kids should wear their backpacks on both shoulders so the weight is evenly distributed. Wearing it over one shoulder can curve the spine and cause discomfort. After all, even a heavy school schedule shouldn't be a burden on the student's back. Hey guys, I'm Danny Foots, and here are this week's Netflix and DVD picks. The first one is going to be The Skyjacker's Tale, starring Ishmael Ali and Bradley Gordon. After five citizens of the Virgin Islands are convicted in the 1970s of a massacre at one of the island's fancy country clubs, their leader stages a skyjacking and escapes to Cuba. Second movie is going to be Donnie Darko, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Jenna Malone, and Patrick Swayze. A troubled teenager is plagued by visions of a man in a large rabbit suit who manipulates him to commit a series of crimes after he narrowly escapes a bizarre accident. And the third movie is going to be the classic Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, starring Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. NASCAR driver Ricky Bobby stays atop the heap thanks to a pact with his best friend and teammate, Cal Naughton Jr., but when a French Formula One driver makes his way up the ladder, Ricky Bobby's talent and devotion are put to the test. For our DVD releases this week, the first one is going to be Shot Caller, starring John Berthal and Nikolaj Koster. A newly released prison gangster is forced by the leaders of his gang to orchestrate a major crime with a brutal rival gang on the streets of South Carolina. Second movie is going to be Girls Trip, starring Queen Latifah, Regina Hall, and Jada Pinkett Smith. When four lifelong friends travel to New Orleans for the annual Essence Festivals, sisterhoods are rekindled, wild sides are rediscovered, and there's enough dancing, drinking, brawling, and romancing to make the big easy blush. And our third film and final is going to be Demonic, starring Mario Bella and Frank Grillo. A police officer and a psychologist investigate the deaths of five people who were killed while trying to summon ghosts. That was this week's Netflix and DVD picks. I'm Danny Foots, and let's get back to the picture show. And a welcome back to the picture show. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap up this Halloween theme of the picture show. I already asked you what your favorite scenes were, your least favorite movies, or the least out of them all, mm -hmm. where you'll place them. What kind of questions do I have? Oh, yeah. Did you know that all of these do have kind of like a second trailer or a second show to them? Second show to them. Like Jeepers Creepers 2, Friday the 13th. We all know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of same with. And all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Didn't they make a remake in like 2010? I believe, I say I believe I'm not sure about the year, but I believe so. Yeah, they did make a remake almost <laughs> exactly the same as the. I heard Friday the 13th. But I heard somewhat some complaints about the Nightmare on Elm Street, like the new Freddy, like. One of my friends, a relative, said that they didn't like how serious Freddy was in the new ones, whereas he was like kind of, even though he did the killing, he was like charismatic and like joked he around a lot. He was very charismatic. <laughs> That's one, of the one thing I did like about Freddy was that he was very charismatic. He had a character and everything, mm -hmm. so it was really good. But if you ever watch the first ones and you want to watch the same thing, I would say go watch the second movies because Jeepers Creepers has 
the kids on the school bus. The sister actually mm-hmm. comes back in the second one. Yeah, I remember you said that. I don't remember who they did in Fred- the other Freddy Krueger's movie. I think they just started bringing in new characters because yeah. they all kind of, they all quote unquote I'm- survive. Because at the end of the movie, the mother gets taken through the thing, but yeah. you see Glenn and Tina mm-hmm. and another person. I don't remember I know, who the other person was. I know one of those had, like, they tried to hide Freddy Cougar, like, away from school books and stuff, so nobody could remember him. I forgot which movie that was, but that one sounded pretty interesting. That did sound pretty interesting. I didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. And then, of course, Friday the 13th, they all have different genres of them. And the other ones, I think they do bring up. I don't remember which one has the one with the ho- the generic hockey mask Jason. I don't remember which one it was. I, I looked it up, the, and I don't remember which one it was. I think the next one had the bag over his face, I believe, the, part two. Everybody, a lot of people that I, <laughs> when I tell them, like, there's the hockey mask, they're like, did you know there's the potato sack one? I'm like, potato sack? I didn't it's, know about the potato sack He has one. a mask. <laughs> it's like he has a bag over his head and stuff, but everybody calls it the potato sack. I'm like, oh. Oh, the same, okay, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Okay. But, all right, thank you for joining me for this theme of the picture show. Yep, no problem. It was fun. Next week, we're going to do Happy Death Day, which comes out tomorrow, which is about yeah. a girl who, ha- who has to keep, who keeps dying and wakes up the oh, next yeah. day, and she has to find out who, her murderer, yeah. what, who her murderer is before she can live to see the next day. I think that would be very interesting. Sounds cool. I would tell you who's hosting that day, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. But we'll see next next Thursday. So, don't forget, tomorrow is Friday the 13th. So, everyone, stay safe, beware <laughs> of Jason, and we'll see you next Thursday if you survive.